Hi, I'm Bruce White with Sterling Systems, and I will present a test project that I did several months ago. If you've been watching my other videos, it is the same property that I did with the BLK360 Generation 2 scanner. The BLK to go is a mobile scanner, so you literally just walk the property and the house, and in a few minutes the project is fully collected. This is the view from Google Earth that shows the property. It is a lakefront cottage that's approximately 850 square feet. If you're familiar with terrestrial or static scanning, you'll know that small spaces with lots of rooms can take much longer than larger spaces. With the BLK to go, you can just walk both inside and outside and be done. The property is approximately 265 feet from the edge of the road to the lake and approximately 85 feet wide. This whole project was collected in 12 minutes and 8 seconds in the field. Okay, let's get on with scanning the project. On our tablet, we're going to load the BLK to go live app and allow it to connect to the scanner. You'll see that it does give you instructions and all actions are done through one button on the scanner. It is now connected. And now we're going to start the scanner by pressing the power button. Once it turns green, I will press and hold the button again for two to three seconds for the scanner to start recording. We use the term of a walk instead of a scan with a mobile scanner. There is a weighted base that we start and end our walks on and it is very important that this does not move. After starting the walk, I need to let the BLK to go map the starting area well by allowing it to collect data for approximately 30 seconds while I hold it. At this point, I can lift it up and start walking. The day that I collected this data was extremely windy, so I've turned the recorded audio off. You can see that the system is giving me live feedback on my tablet. I like to use a shoulder strap so that I don't have to hold the tablet. This allows me to have a free hand unlike many systems. As I walk to the road, I keep a steady pace, not too fast. A recent software upgrade now provides real-time quality assurance. If all the data is fitting well together, the indicator on the tablet is green. If I'm moving too quickly, it turns yellow. If I move far too quickly, it'll turn red, and that tells me that I should just restart the walk. I didn't specifically mention it, but the area on the left side of the screen is what is showing up on my tablet on the BLK to go live app. I'm going to give it a minute at the road to allow time to collect the area before I turn around and head down to the lake. While I'm walking, let me cover some of the basics of the BLK to go. It uses Grand Slam technology, which is a combination of LiDAR Slam, Visual Slam, and an IMU, which is inertial measurement uh, unit, to track its position and movement, which provides it a superior accuracy. The weight is 1.7 pounds and is under 11 inches high and 3.1 inches in diameter. It provides a fully colorized point cloud and full imagery with three cameras providing a 12 megapixel image. Battery life is 45 to 50 minutes per battery, and the unit ships with three batteries and can store up to 24 hours of scanning walks. It has an 80-foot range, and although it is difficult to define accuracy with any mobile unit because you're moving, one-quarter inch accuracy is usually obtained. The data is downloaded either through the USB-C cable or wireless. The unit shoot, shoots 420,000 points per second and has an IP54 rating. For the sake of your time, I'm going to speed it up two times uh, for the next uh, couple of minutes.
As I approach the starting point again, I have a couple of things to keep in mind. First, I'm going to use two separate walks to do this project. The first I did outside and the second I will do inside. I need to have overlap between the two walks so that the software can match the two walks together using cloud to cloud registration. To do this, I will let the unit scan part of the main first floor living area and then go back to the base and end the walk. If I wasn't so worried about the video cameras and recording and everything, I would have remembered to open my door before I started the walk. Oops. Thankfully, I had a free hand. Now I'm walking back to the base, setting the unit back on the base, and also watching the tablet to make sure that my path is going right back to the original space that I left. Another quality assurance check. And I'm going to let it collect data for about another 30 seconds here. And then I'll uh, stop the, the walk and uh, get ready for the next one. Here I will start another walk the same way that I did before. I'll press the button on the scanner, hold it, and allow it to map its starting point. I will then head into the house. Scanning indoors is a little different than outdoors. You'll maintain a slow pace, um, slightly slower than outside because there's more to map. Please notice that when I go through any doorways, I pause on the threshold to allow it to continue mapping the previous space and also start mapping the new space before I fully enter. Again, for the interest of time, I'm going to speed up the, the video and uh, get to the end of the data collection. Just maintain your speed, be careful going into new spaces, take your time, and uh, all should be well. I have now mapped the entire house. Rather than going back up the stairs and remapping that area again, I will choose to exit the basement door and go back up the stairs to the deck and the starting point. This will provide even more area to use for the cloud to cloud registration and a more balanced registration. I will stop the walk the same way that I did before. Walk to the base, insert the scanner into the base, allow it 30 seconds to remap the area, and then a long press on the scanner button to end the walk. At that point, I will hold the scanner button again until it shuts off. Data collection is now done, 12 minutes, 8 seconds.
The data has now been imported in Register 360, which is LICA's registration software. And you can see that the two separate walks came in basically in two different places. So what we need to do is connect them using cloud to cloud registration. So I'm going to move this little one over to the big one and just drop it in in a rough area. And then it creates what it thinks are link candidates or constraint candidates. So I'm going to select one and tell it to go into visual registration. It's going to switch screens in one scan will be blue, one scan will be orange. And I'm just going to move and rotate the one um, in, in a 2D planimetric view so that they basically line up. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just, we want to be close. When I get the horizontal all lined up, then I'll take a look at the vertical to make sure that that is okay also. When we look at it vertically, it's a little tough to see it because of all the foliage around, but ultimately I was comfortable with it, so I hit uh, Optimize, and that's where it's going to jiggle the two, essentially jiggle the two clouds to make them fit as well as they, they uh, can. And the results were fine, so I accepted it. Those two uh, walks are now registered together. I'm now going into a function called True Slicer, which is a QAQC. Um, it will take each walk and make it a different color again. And it'll allow me to set slices through the point cloud rather dynamically so that I can make sure that all the blue and the green fit together and, and um, you're just checking the registration. But as you can see, everything looks really good. And I can take that slice, I can move it up and down, and that's what I'm doing right now. Um, there was a pitched roof um, on the first floor, so that's what you're seeing right now. That slice is probably only a, a couple of feet, or maybe a foot and a half in vertical distance. I've checked everything out horizontally. Now I'm going to flip to vertical and do uh, vertical slices through the point cloud just to make sure everything lines up again. Now I've checked everything out, the data looks good, so I'm going to go ahead and finalize it. This is where it'll generate the report, which is what's up right now, and I can also export an RCP file, an LGS, PTS, PTX, uh, virtually any format that you would want. And then in a minute I'm going to look at the three-dimensional point cloud itself, just to give you an idea of, of the actual cloud that it collected. That's going to wrap up this video on what does it look like to use a BLK uh, to go on a project. If you want to see the same project collected with the BLK 360 Generation 2, check out our notes at the bottom, or better yet, go to the Sterling Systems YouTube channel and watch all our videos. 
Please be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions, need an in-person demonstration, or want to order a BLK to go, please email me directly. My contact information will be on the closing screen. Thanks. Have a great day.